So there are many ways that coastal communities need to plan for and adapt um, to the impacts of climate change, and particularly to, to sea level rise. We're gonna talk about four things that need to be done all together. These, it's not one for one, it is all four together need to happen at once. First, we need to plan proactively rather than reactively. Many, many studies have shown that it's actually cheaper to pay to change an environment before a disaster occurs rather than paying to clean up the damage after that disaster occurs. Second, we need to work with nature. We're finding um, so much more often now that these soft enhancements are actually more productive than hard enhancements. So for example, um, building a, uh, a living shoreline with oysters and vegetation is actually more cost-effective and just more effective in general than building really hard structures like a concrete seawall. Um, we also need to retrofit existing buildings, bridges, et cetera, to withstand sea level rise and storms. So we can't just, you know, like the, the new buildings we build need to be prepared for sea level rise, but we also need to work with the buildings that we already have because we can't just let those be destroyed. So we have to retrofit existing buildings. Um, finally, and this is an important one, managed retreats away from the coast, right? We know that our coasts are being put under more and more risk of sea level rise. So whenever possible, we need to stop putting money, stop putting our assets into these coastal regions. Right? So an example of um, cities that are doing this is Tybee Island. Um, so here in Georgia, Tybee Island is the only island um, to have a sea level rise adaptation plan. This means that uh, St. Simons uh, does not, <laughs> which should be scary for us. Um, anyway, so the Tybee Island Sea Level Rise Adaption Plan has five goals. It wants to elevate pump uh, well pump houses, right? So that's retrofitting existing structures. It wants to elevate U.S. Highway 80, again, retrofitting existing structures. It wants to retrofit the stormwater systems. It also wants to enhance the seawall, so build that up higher. Um, finally, it wants to take a soft engineering approach and re-nourish the beaches. That means just adding sand to the beaches that are eroding away. Okay. So Tybee's adaptation plan follows three of the four recommended strategies for adapting to sea level rise. Which strategy is missing? Right? As I said, we have to do all four of those strategies in tandem for them to work well. What is Tybee Island currently not proposing? Well, they're not currently proposing a managed retreat away from the coast. Right? They are continuing to put a lot of money and a lot of assets into a low elevation coastal zone. Um, now, this managed retreat is often not favorable. Right? Obviously, people who live in a place don't want to move if they really like it. I don't want to move away from Brunswick. I really like it here. Um, there's a reason I moved here in the first place. Um, also, as city managers, mayors, governors, right? if people are willing to move and uh, the tourism industry is bringing in money and the agricultural industry is bringing in money, the fishery industry is bringing in money, it's a really, really hard argument to say we should stop making money from our coastal zones and instead retreat away. So this is often the hardest to do, um, but again, it's it's very necessary, especially if we want to save money and lives in the long run.